years of where we were before we came here. Working in a brewery, making the finest beer. You came to me on a payday night, said, let's go to Tennessee. So we came down to Nashville to the Grand Ole Opry. Sing a little bit of it. We were watching TV, Ernest Tubb was singing loud. I said, he's the man for me, I love him, there's no doubt. I'm leaving you and going now to find out where he's at. And if I can't find him, I'll settle for that little grass luster flat. Memphis and Nashville are 200 miles apart in a straight line. And they're at opposite ends of the universe, musically. Long distance information, give me Memphis, Tennessee. Help me find the party, try to get in touch with me. She could not leave her number, but I know who placed the call. Cause my uncle took the message. It was Beale Street and the blues that made Memphis. He don't miss. You see, the, the music from the Delta is, to me, is the foundation of all of it. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. Yes, I am. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. The black gospel and the blues gravitated to the city of Memphis and then moved North Chicago. But whatever we had that was white country shifted to Nashville. Don't you think maybe we could find us a brand new recipe? Like one would say, well, let's don't go there and record because they don't know nothing about country music. It's all rhythm and blues. And then they would say the same, the same thing in, in Memphis. Let's don't go to Nashville because they don't know anything about rhythm and blues. Just, they just told that old country. But now today, we're, we're kind of looking at each other and, and, and liking each other's uh, things because we're so close. I pulled into Nazareth, was feeling about half past dead. I just need some place where I can lay my head. Hey, mister, can you tell me where a man might find a bed? He just grinned and shook my hand and knows all he said. Take a load off Danny. Take a load for free. Take a load off Danny. And you put the load right the Lord on me. Bags. Went looking for a place to hide. When I saw old Carmen and the devil walking side by side, I said, Hey, Carmen, come on, let's go downtown. She said, I gotta go, but my friend can stick around. What I would like to see happen ultimately with this record is that somehow without dotting the I and putting the, the token pedal steel guitar in there, so, well, that's country, and geez, those kunga drums are r and I would like it, I'd like it to be seamless. I'd like to stay true to the song. Good old Moses, there's nothing that you can say. Robot pop staples goes back to the days of the Delta Blues. He knew and worked with people like Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, Robert Jr. Lockwood, and many others. So uh, I started playing when I was a boy. Played down there, played a few blues in Mississippi. When we get through picking cotton, we sat out on the big porch and sang. Take a load, take a load of Marty Stewart is probably the purest of the current 
traditional country performance, and he has always maintained that type of straight country, rural mountain music approach. Pops and I are both from Mississippi, so we got to work this thing out together. But uh, we probably had some of the same influences, you know, in our uh, formative days musically. And we were all raised in the church house. And I think I hear all kind of influences in the way to others. Musically, I hear you know, a bit of gospel in this, you know. God made man and he made him out of clay. Put him on earth, but not to stay. Pharaoh's army got down there. I think the Mississippi Delta was just as, as fertile to American culture as the Delta was in ancient Egypt. It was where black people heard the white man's music and made something new out of it. It was where uh, the white man heard the black man's music. And, uh, you know, people say the blues came from Africa. Well, I think they, they really came from the Deep South. Man, yeah, I thank God that they invented guitars to get people like you and me out of cotton fields. We've <laughs> <laughs> just been in the way down there, man. Take a load off, Danny. Take a load free. Take a load off, Danny. And you put the load right the load on me. I always felt that country music was just white soul music and that essentially thematically you're dealing with the same material and even musically you're on this chord that's that's based pretty much from you know comes from the blues really rhythm and blues was one of the hybrid forms that emerged out of the jazz revolution of the mid and late 40s and people like Charlie Parker Dizzy Gillespie and many others began making harmonic and melodic changes in the music. Some of the other musicians who had gotten their apprenticeship in swing bands, rather than adapt and change to the bebop form, they took what they'd always done, the swing and the jump, and they simply merged swing and jump with gospel-based vocals, and that's really where rhythm and blues comes from. I get two kicks on Route 66. Go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City, and that's mighty pretty you see. And I fell for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since I fell for you, great song, man. Now, you call, see, that's the difference. We call them, the black folk call them torches. White folk call them pop. Always that difference in there. I had no trouble getting into this at all. I thought I would because, like I said, the song has been done 9,000 times by, you know, by everybody. There was just a big difference in the way that music sounded and the way the music sounds today. There was something about the melodies. There was something about the words that made it all just work, and you never forgot those melodies. So, and yeah, yeah, I know I can't get you out of my heart. You, 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 you made me leave my happy home. Oh, oh. You took my love. Now you're gone, 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 gone Since I fell for you Oh, yeah, yeah Oh, love Sing with me Bring such me I guess 
Every now and then I would watch the country music awards, you know, when no one was looking. <laughs> and uh, um, I saw her, I saw her singing, and I don't know, just something about her. I think the blues and country music are very close. I've always said that if you can get the emotion, the deep down gutsy feeling of R&B and the, tr the very um, relatable lyrics from country, you've got a monster song. It's too bad and it's too sad. country music. I'm religiously in love with it, and I always have been. But the honky tonks and lonely songs I left behind when I loved you. It's just uh, real close to country music, and I love rhythm and blues, and this is the reason I've always loved B.B. King. No one man ever enters her mind. She loves to flirt with maybe eight or nine. She loves to go out and have a ball. B.B. King. I sort of like raised that boy, you know. Uh, he came to Memphis from a little town down in Mississippi called Indianola. I lived in the Delta, and there was no music stores or anything near us, so we had to order things by uh, mail order. And the first songs I learned about the musical notation was My Darling Clementine. Oh, uh, you are my sunshine. Uh, the governor of Louisiana, is Jimmy right. Davis. Jimmy Davis. Yeah. So in the Delta, we call country music the white man's blues, and ours was the other blues. And uh, so we both crossed over and sang some of all. Two days later, Papa passed away. I became a man that day. Every day I had to work the fields. Cause that's the only way we got our mail See, I was the oldest of the family And everybody was depending on me Now years have passed and everybody's grown Mama's been living in a brand new home Lord knows it took a lot of sweat and tears And my daddy's voice to help us through the years He said, that year It's American music, that's what we call American music Something that you can relate to something that happens every day in, in people's lives. You think because if a white man comes home in the morning and he be living with his wife for 25 years and got four children, and he comes home from work in the evening, 
And when he gets there and opens up that door, there's no furniture in the house, nothing, bare walls. Even the linoleum up off the floor, salt out of the shakers. And just because he's white, you think he ain't got the blues? And that's what Rhythm and Blues is, uh, stories are about, uh, like Patches, and, uh, and that's what country music is about. Patches, I'm depending on your son to pull the family through. My son, it's all left up. Patches, I'm depending on your son. I try to do my Memphis celebrates the individual, and uh, there has never been a major record company affiliation in Memphis to survive. Nashville became a, a music center relatively late, and really as a result of a, a series of historical uh, accidents. Certainly one of the most important factors was that the Grand Ole Opry was in Nashville. Speaking of uh, Grand Ole Opry, why, everybody expects some picking and singing. Well, that's what we're going to do for you here tonight. So we'll start off with a little bit of hillbilly fever. Yeah! So the Opry gradually gathered in the finest talent uh, in country music. And it became natural for uh, people to begin to record here in Nashville if they wanted to work with that talent. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? about cooking something up The really ironic thing is the first Patsy Cline song I ever remember hearing was I Fall to Pieces because um, <laughs> my, my parents had one of those, uh, you know, great country hits of the Stars albums you could probably buy off the television. And I and, uh, so we recorded I Fall to Pieces, put it out, <clears throat> and it became a hit. Eventually, it took a long time. It was like several, eight, eight, maybe eight months, because we tried so hard to get a hit. And uh, she said, "You know, I never disliked that song." I think it's really dangerous to try to recapture Patsy's moment. I, this, you know, we've we've been dealing with some. That's one of the real challenges of this record, and and it's incumbent upon me after leaving the studio not to try to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, destroy that moment or, or obscure the, the essence of what was happening. The, the reason we have so many musicians playing live is to try to really walk out of here with as close to a finished record as we can. Each time I see you again. Aaron Neville, in his own way, I believe, is what uh, Jerry Lee Lewis likes to call a stylist, someone so, like Al Jolson, Jimmy Rogers, Hank Williams. How can I be just 
just your friend people try to stereotype country music as they think we're all hillbillies. I think we're proving right now uh, that, that country music is more than, than just singing through your nose <laughs> and, and, and being uh, unaware about all kinds of other kinds of music. Rhythm and blues was a black music. First and foremost, it was designed, structured, conceived, and geared for black audiences. At the same time, though, you had the phenomenon from the late 40s into the early 50s and prior to the emergence of rock and roll, in which more and more white youngsters began to hear it and were attracted to it. Politically, of course, people who were opposed to it immediately realized that if whites began to listen to the music and begin to view the people who made the music as no different than they are, well then, that was obviously going to lead to them questioning the kinds of laws that kept them apart. Little Richard uh, is an amazing character. It was a degree of mania that he injected into the music. Forget about uh, R&B, rock and roll. He just uh, definitions really have no have no bearing. You know, she's more than a country singer to me, and country music is one of my favorite music. I'm from Georgia, and I've always loved country music. Bill Monroe and Hank Williams, all yeah. those people from way, way back. Because it's a true. They sing the truth. And, and when I heard this girl, I said, this girl can sing. 
She is a rock and roll singer. <laughs> Shut up. Well, look at that. Here she comes. Man, she's something else. Hey, look at that. Across the street. There's a car made just for me. To own that car would be a luxury. But right now I can't afford the gas. A brand new convertible is out of my class. That can't stop me from a thinking to myself. That car's fine looking, man. Wow, it's something else. Hey, look at here. Just wait and see. Work hard and I save my dough. I'm bound to come and I've been wanting so. Get me the dairy boy running around. We look real sharp in a white top down. Keep right on dreaming and I'm thinking to myself. When it all comes true, man, why? That's something else. What's all this? I never thought I'd do this before But here I am, I'm knocking on his door My car's out front and it's all mine Just a 41, 49, 59 I got that boy and I'm thinking to myself He's sure a fine looking man Wow, he's something else I've been a fan of his for probably 25, 30 years. Well, in New Orleans, we say there's God and there's Chet Atkins. And uh, now with this project, we're recording some together, black music and white music. and. It's been coming closer together, really, ever since Elvis. For me personally, uh, growing up, uh, you know, get, cutting my musical fandom in the 50s, uh, you know, early rock and roll was essentially you know, country music, you know, rockabilly, and, 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 and R&B. So that, that's what it was. That, that's what uh, the, those, those of us kids in the 50s were, were listening to. So in the mid-50s, you have Elvis here in the center sort of representing uh, the advent of rock and roll. Though rock and roll really had preceded him by a dozen or so years, in the popular mind, he was the avatar of rock and roll. Elvis's impact on black music was like nothing else, because it really gave black music an injection that it hadn't had before. A white boy doing it now. That makes it good. <laughs> and that's what Sam Phillips was looking for. He was looking for a white boy that could sing in a black manner and attract all the kids, and um, he was right. Chet Atkins put that rough edge into Elvis's first RCA recordings. Southern Sky. storyline is a culmination of uh, my early childhood. It was such a wonderful feeling of uh, being surrounded by everything that was important in life. And it goes rushing through your soul like the stories told of old, old man. They'd sit on the porches late at night because there wasn't a lot of electric lights around and they'd tell these stories and the wind would blow and blow through the trees and the moon was out and then a big gush of wind would come and blow right through your soul, seemed like. Been would cry for joy.
Chet Atkins is a major player in the development of Nashville as a, as a recording center. He was the guy who really went into the studio and had a major role in how country records sounded uh, from the late 1950s through the middle 1970s. Rockabilly sprang out of Memphis in the middle 1950s and horrified country because it really pulled uh, fans away from the traditional country artists. Conway was really somebody who came out of, uh, uh, out of the burst of energy of rock and roll and rockabilly and then landed as a, as a country singer. Hovering by my suitcase Trying to find a warm place to spend the night Heavy raindrops falling Seems I hear your voice calling It's all right I believe it's raining all over the world. Anytime you hear a Conway Twitty song, you always hear a lot. Certainly you hear country. But you always hear a little gospel, both black and white and blue. Neon signs are flashing. Taxi cabs and buses passing through the night. A distant moan of a train. Play a sad refrain to the night. <laughs> a rainy night in Georgia. A rainy night in Georgia. If you play back some of the old material of Sam and Dave, you'll hear a whole heap of country in there. You'll hear, even with Soul Man, you hear the opening line. It's country. I'm coming to you on a tough road. Good loving, down a tough road. When you get it, you got something. So don't worry, cause I'm coming. If you would take the horns away from the Sam and Day material, you would hear all country. Because this is where we basically started. Soul music goes with country music. There's, there's just, there's just a, if there's a line at all, there's a tiny one. Raining all over, all over the world, Conway Twitty. <laughs> you know, I kind of like it when it rains like that. You like that? Bring back some memories from a long it does. time ago. It does. Remember how the rain used to sound? It just makes you want to, you know, sometimes just sit back and go, da 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 Yeah, it makes me want to, but I can't, Sam. Oh, you can do it. <laughs> try, try, try. But I can tell you this. I what? remember how that rain used to sound on that tin roof back yeah. home. Yeah, do that deep thing I like to hear you do. Uh, that's it. That's the one right there. Uh, <laughs> oh, Brooke Benton, where are you, son? Yeah. <laughs>
I love that. When something's wrong with my baby, that's one of my favorite all-time rhythm and blues soul ballads, written by uh, Isaac Hayes and David Porter. We chose the Travis Tritt Patty the Bell song like just the other day, and uh, turns out Patty's got a lot of preparation. We, Travis wanted to do uh, Sam and Dave's When Something's Wrong With My Baby. Turns out Dave was Patty's cousin, and so she so she's done a lifetime of preparation for it. Sam and Dave, Stax Records, huh? back in about, what, 1966 or 7? I'm not sure. You remember the year? I don't remember the year, nor the month, <laughs> nor the day. I can tell you approximately what happened. It happened a lot the same way every day. We'd all get to the studio about 11 o'clock, and David would be showing Sam and Dave the lyric and how it went with the song. And, and, and I getting John singing it to them in front of them and everything. heard black and white during that whole tenure with Stax. All I heard was music and people putting that stuff together. And this was all being done in a time in which segregation was still the law of the land and these people could actually be arrested. They'd leave the studio and they couldn't go out and get a meal together. And we didn't think much about that. That was before inter you know integration. We were driving through Mississippi and Alabama to get to Muscle Shoals. And we stopped a lot of times at a little Dairy Queen in Mississippi, about halfway, to get food. And the first time we stopped there, they still had a colored window on the side and a white window in the front. My dilemma was whether to get out and go with the black guys through the side window and piss off the rednecks, <laughs> or go with the white window in the front and piss off my pals. <laughs> so I just stay in the car, give Andrew $5, I'll say, bring me a cheeseburger to shake. <laughs> When something is wrong with my baby. You know, I think of Travis as being a guy with one foot in a southern rock band and one foot in country music. Just when you try to think that I'm in this little category and you put me in this little box, I'm gonna jump right over out. here. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm not gonna I'm mm -hmm. not gonna stay there. Because that's you know, it's not part of, of of what I am. I'm, I'm a mixture of every different kind of music that I grew up listening to. I'm a product of my influences.
Something is wrong. Something is wrong. I think that uh, traditionally speaking, uh, in the in the history of R&B, there's been more crossover than from country, if, if you see what I mean. I mean, uh, one of the standard things to do in the 60s or early 70s with an R&B artist was to cut a country song. This, uh, I guess, was started by Ray Charles. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How about cooking something up with me? What we're really looking for are songs that are incredible songs that that could be done by either a country artist or an R&B artist, but, but that are larger than either, you know, faction, if you will. This is our green. <laughs> how you, how you doing? Oh, doing fine. been so long now, and it seems like it was only yesterday, ain't it funny how time slips away, hey, 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 yeah, all right now, <laughs> ain't it funny, how time slips away. I still did it wrong. Ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah, yeah, I see Lyle is singing uh, my note. Uh -oh. he, he don't seem to want to sing his note. Wait, show show me my note again. Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny? Yeah. Funny how time slips away. Yeah. It should be funny. good. Mm -hmm. yeah, the song itself. Mm. You know, is that country and western song? Gee, ain't it funny? How time just slips away. I got I got to sing "Funny How Time Slips Away" for uh, Willie Nelson's birthday party uh, a while back, mm. and the the idea of being able to sort of um, marry these two mm -hmm. two versions of the song was really exciting to me. Ain't it funny? I gotta go now Well, I'll see you somewhere Back in time Remember uh, What I told you In time You're gonna pay Ain't it funny How time Slips
the Soul era, I think, was the final fruition for what I considered to be the greatest form of vocal music, which is gospel, being adapted wholly into the popular sector. Now, you're a man. Are you still doing church on Sunday? Oh, yeah. Occasionally. Every Sunday. I mean. You gotta come. Bring your wife and you come and enjoy it, man. All great music does reflect the the era in which it, it, it comes, but I think the truly timeless music, I think will always have something to say. Chang, chang, chang. producer today but now that he's on the phone <laughs> uh, but the, uh, no this is the phone a... this is a uh this is are a, you uh, listening to the track <laughs> yes you can hear the track yeah <laughs> man that's uh, great this... Jay, Jay, Jay. Jay, Jay, Jay. Clint, Clint Black is a very interesting performer because he's uh he's a, a real honky-tonk country singer and I think you can draw a line from Clint to George Strait to George Jones to Lefty Frizzell to Hank Williams. I've got goosebumps, you know, just, just thinking about that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the significance of us doing this song. Yeah, together, you really? know. That sounds Knowing kind of that, wonderful. That comes Times from. they are changing, I think. You got me where you want me. I ain't nothing but your blue. You're treating me mean. Oh, oh, you're treating me We're not going to go all the way through. This is just to set Gladys' level and check the tempo. Oh, no, this, this project gave me a great excuse to work with two people I've been dying to work with. You know, Gladys Knight, obviously. I come from Detroit. Uh, you know, it's, this, is, this is 30 years of wanting to work with Gladys Knight. So glad we've got the real thing. 
I personally find it much harder to cover a song like Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing, which is a perfect record. Well, all we had was the hook, though. And then it was like strange because when he came up with the verse, I said, it's kind of like poet poetry, you know. It's kind of you know, your picture on the wall. I can't see or come to me. It's, it's kind of poetic. Is this down enough? Well, oh, Ashford and Simpson ain't nothing like the real thing, and and Motown in general really represents kind of the the other complete end of the spectrum from Stax and Southern Soul. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vince Gladys, the intro will be exactly the same as the record. It's like two bars and then in. One bar drums and then da 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 da. <laughs> Vince is the guy who is, uh, I mean, he is returning the, the, the tenor singer to the heartthrob status within, within country music. You would think that R&B music and, and the perception of country music being a redneck music and so on and so forth, that they would be like at opposite ends of the spectrum, but I see them like... Just like that. Right there. I really do. A lot of people don't know that the original title to Midnight Train to Georgia. Midnight Plane to Houston. Plane to Houston. <laughs> yeah. I said, I do not know too much about Houston, and I <laughs> sure don't like to fly. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Ain't nothing like the real thing. No, honey. I've got your picture hanging on. By the end, it became clear that there was this fabric of uh, shared human experience. I suppose it's the humanistic message of the record, that, that beneath skin color, what you're dealing with is human emotion. I've never heard a story told like country people tell a story musically. It is so raw and so basic, everybody can understand it. So glad we got the real thing, baby. So glad we got the real thing. I love the emotion and the soul, you know, and that comes in country music and R&B music yes, yes. both. I think country music is great. It's doing great right now. But I think we got too much up stuff. We got too much uh, uh, happy stuff. I think the feeling needs to really get back, like rhythm and blues, and and uh, and, and needs to get back to basics. Blues has no color. Blues is that feeling that distorts your mind or rip your insides out.
Well, hello there. Mine, it's been a long time. How am I doing? Well, I guess I'm doing fine. It's been so long now, and it seems like it was only yesterday. Ain't it funny how time slips away? How's your new love? I hope he's doing fine. I heard you told him you're gonna love. Till the end of time 